Okay, so before we can move on to the next problem, remember this tells us the condition for the spots that you'll see. This is the colors you'll see. This is the constructive interference. But we should also ask, what's the condition going to be for destructive interference, the colors that you don't see? So let's stick with, again, a film that's between the air and some more air. We want to know when are we going to get destructive uh, interference. Uh, so uh, we should ask what path length difference would give us destructive interference. Well, first of all, remember that we had this inversion. If, if, if all we had was the inversion, would the inversion by itself give us destructive or constructive interference? Because we started in phase, and then the inversion put them half a cycle out of phase. So um, now we want a path length difference that keeps them out of phase. To get destructive interference, we want a path length difference that would keep them out of phase. Well, what's the smallest, um, what's the smallest path length difference that would keep them out of phase? If they're already out of phase, and then one just goes a complete cycle, it'll still be out of phase. If you're out of phase and you go a complete cycle, you're still out of phase. And then what's the next length that will have them out of phase? Two wavelengths. Good. And then three wavelengths. So how would the mathematicians write this? They would say the path length difference is m times lambda. And what can m be? Notice that in this case, it doesn't make sense for m to be 0. The path length difference can't be 0, because then there wouldn't really be a film. Um, so you always have to think about whether m could be 0 or not. But here, there can't be a 0 path length difference, because then the film wouldn't exist at all. And remember, we still have the same expression. How do we calculate the path length difference? How, long is the, how, long, how much longer is the path of one ray than the other ray? It's uh, uh, 2d. Right. Just by looking at the picture, we can see that one has to go d this way and d the other way. So now we found the equation for destructive interference in this situation. Now, the reason that we're spending time deriving these and not just memorizing them um, is that the formulas would be different with different conditions. So we have to know how to figure these out. It looks like I made the same mistake as before. I forgot that the wavelength is going to be smaller inside here. So I should really go back and say, what matters, the path length difference occurs when you're inside the film. So what matters is the wavelength inside the film. So I should be using lambda subscript n for the wavelength inside the film. Well, that's decreased from the original lambda by a factor of n. Looks like I need to work on remembering that. All right, so the formula I had before was wrong. Uh, this is the correct formula that takes into account that inside the film, the original wavelength has been decreased by a factor of n, just like the original speed has been decreased by a factor of n. So this is the formula that we would use for destructive interference. So if you want to know what colors you will see reflected off the film, you would use this equation. But if you want to know what colors you won't see, you would use this equation. OK. Uh, now, looking at this list of m's, is there a minimum m in the list or a maximum m? There's, a, there's no maximum. There is a minimum. We said m can't be, it doesn't make sense to be smaller than one wavelength difference. So the minimum n is 1. All right, well, um, now we have the ever popular thinking on paper again. If there's a minimum m, does that mean there's a minimum thickness or a maximum thickness? Let's say we hold the wavelength constant. If we hold the wavelength constant, when m is minimized, does that give us a minimum d or a maximum d? gives us a minimum D. The question is, as you decrease M and you hold this constant, what do you have to do to D? Well, your answer was right. Your answer was right. You have to decrease D on the left-hand side for the equation to still be true. So when M is at its minimum, D is at its minimum. How can they ask you for that? Well, they might ask for something like the minimum thickness, because d is the thickness. 
So how do you find the minimum thickness? You do that by plugging in the, the lowest possible value for m, which is not 0 in this case, but 1. Uh, if they ask you for the minimum thickness, we plug in the smallest possible value for n, uh, and then we can find the minimum thickness uh, that gives us the result that we want. Let us try number 41. Who has the n of 1.42? Uh, yeah, so it's always best to write the n where it applies. It's the film that has that n. So let's put that into our diagram here. I'm seeing that uh, 2D comes up uh, pretty consistently in the problems that we've been going over. Is this something that we're going to see in most uh, thin film problems? You're going to have a 2D? Pretty much every thin film problem will be 2D because every thin film problem, in order to get the equation, you have to focus on the path length difference. How much longer does one ray go to the other? But on any standard problem, it always goes twice the thickness. It goes one way and the other way. However, um, if, when you do other interference problems, say about slits, when you do problems about slits, usually that's, that's based just on D, not 2D. But it's true, pretty much any thin film problem, the path length difference will be based on 2D. Okay. It's the right-hand side of the equations that tends to vary. So we know that when uh, we have a minimum D, we are also going to have a minimum M. Right. Okay. So we can start filling in some of the things like um, our, our we can fill in for M, we can fill in for wavelength. If we want to find the smallest D, we should plug in the smallest possible M, which is not 0, but 1. Good. It's always a good idea to just do some calculations. 480 divided by 1.42 is 338.03 approximately. So I got a distance of 169.01 nanometers. You can see why these are called thin films. OK. Sounds good to me. OK. There we go. All right, that one more smoother than the last one. That's good. They definitely are. Since we plugged in nanometers, we get out nanometers. OK. So what were the hard parts here? Well, the hard part was coming up with this formula. OK. Uh, and again, path length difference is pretty much always 2D. We can see that from the formula. Uh, and the point here is the inversions would have put the, um, now we want destructive interference. Well, the inversions would already give you destructive interference. So we want a path length difference that preserves the destructive interference. 
Well, if you're already half a cycle out of phase, and then you go an additional cycle, you stay half a cycle out of phase. So this is how we came up with this uh, equation here. And we've got to remember that the wavelength inside is the original wavelength over n. So that was uh, that formula. And then we plugged in the minimum uh, n here. Good. Now, this problem is kind of obvious that we're going to use this equation because I just talked about it. But how would you know when to use this and when to use this? Well, if you look at the question we did before, the question was asking what wavelength will appear or what wavelength will reflect. Well, the wavelength that does reflect is the one that you get from the constructive. But this question is asking for when it would, does it say in your book when it would appear black? Black, yeah. Well, when it appears black, that was because, because of destructive interference. That was the big clue to use this equation, where it said when it appears black. 